my God is good. Oh.
nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Listen, I'm not worried. He's here in this room. He's in us. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Give him glory. Worship him. Yeah. Come and let him hear your voice. Let your voice fill the room right now. Oh, we worship, we worship, we worship you. You 
are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yes, God. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, 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 oh. yes, we give you glory. Yeah. Song says, You are here, searching every heart. I worship you. Come on, sing with me. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship. Sing it out loud as I can say. Way make miracle walk, promise skip, light in the darkness.
You never stop falling, let me hear you say Even when I don't see it, you work yeah. Even when I don't feel it, you work You never yeah. stop, you never stop, you never stop I've never working. seen you stop You never stop, you never stop Even when I don't feel it Even when I don't see it, you work yeah. December, God has kept us. We are here today. And we're here to declare the blessings of God that never left us. Woo. All the days of our lives, His blessings shall keep following us. The Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord cause his face towards you and give you peace. Oh, Lord bless you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face towards you and give you peace. Sing.
It is so, it is so in heaven. We declare Amen. Amen. We agree with heaven.
hallelujah, from thousands and thousands of generations, from your family, your children, their children, you're coming and you're going. He is for you. He is with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you And I'm grateful for your grace And because of how you poured out yourself I have come to sing this song out in praise Amen
does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. On the 22nd of December 2019, at Team Convention Center, Las Piñas City, Philippines, Bishop Tony gave some profound prophecies about global events, things that the Lord revealed to him that would take place in 2020. I was at the crossover service amongst hundreds of team members. He prophesied about the deadly coronavirus and other current global events. Here are the fulfillment of those prophecies. Glory be to God. The philosophical differences between liberals and conservatives worldwide will continue to widen. Let's pray against intolerance, racism, and hatred among people and nations. God is love. Thousands of demonstrators gathered in London to protest against racism and discrimination despite calls from politicians not to defy the lockdown there because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Rarely have protests over deaths in custody drawn so many Australians. Tens of thousands rallied in Australian cities, great and small. Their focus, hundreds of Aboriginal deaths in jails and police stations in the past 30 years, with no police officer ever found guilty. In Brazil, demonstrators have been raising their voices against the killing of black people mainly in poor neighborhoods called the favelas. Figures released by the Rio de Janeiro Public Security Institute show that killings by police have increased to record levels in recent years. In Mexico, mass demonstrators vandalized buildings and threw stones at the U.S. Embassy in the capital. Protests began here on Thursday after the death of a young man in Jalisco State. The 2020 elections in the USA will greatly divide the nation and create a big gap between the left and the right, with the nation's enemies exploiting the situation. The campaigns will be rough and tough if believers pray fervently, combat hatred, embrace love and reconciliation, they can avoid a painful outcome. Saying hackers in Russia, China and Iran are actively targeting 2020 campaigns and US think tanks. Microsoft says Russian state hackers have attacked more than 200 US political organizations, while China's targeted high profile political organizers, including people associated with the Biden campaign. Adding Iran has attacked personal accounts of people associated with the Trump campaign. 
In this year's U.S. presidential campaign, it's no longer just Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, Republican versus Democrat. It's urban versus rural, black versus white, rich versus poor, mask versus no mask. The line between liberals on the left and conservatives on the right has never been so clear. This election has reinforced how politically divided America remains. Political opponents should not be enemies, and yet that is too often the reality in this country. 2020 has been a year where division and inequality has come to a painful head. And yet the gap between sides has never felt so wide. In a city where divisions turned to violence earlier this year, the hangover to this election feels heavy. With one day to go, political tensions remain high. In Houston, vandals targeted the county's Democratic Party headquarters, spray painting the windows with the words, elections no, revolution yes. In Beverly Hills over the weekend, protesters and counter protesters traded fists. The city's chief is warned about election motivated violence. Some African nations will do well economically in 2020, especially Rwanda, Burundi, South Africa, and others. Nigeria will face tough hurdles with slight economic growth. Let us pray for God to raise a new generation of believers and ministers in this nation, men and women of integrity, principles, and commitment who will worship God in spirit and in truth and transform the nation positively. This report indicates that Rwanda's economic growth will be at 8.1%, while other African countries will grow their economies at the range of minus 1.4% and 7%. Economic expert François Kanimba explained that economic development is best on investment and investment returns. Our economy rose by 66.1%, seasonally adjusted, annualized. And when we look at the seasonally adjusted, non -annual, not annualized, it rose by 13.5%. President Buhari called on protesters to get off the streets and warned of subversive elements now threatening national security. But that's upset prominent Nigerians now clamoring for fundamental change. Sources say more than 100 people have been killed in a brutal massacre in the country's northwest. Eyewitnesses said militants on motorcycles rounded up and killed farmers who were bringing in their harvest in northern Borno state in Nigeria. No one has claimed responsibility, but jihadist groups have attacked the area in recent years. There are more than 300 boys are still missing after gunmen abducted them from their boarding school in Katsina state in the northern part of the country. Security forces have continued to search in the nearby forest area to try and locate them. The Philippines economy will be sustained in 2020, but we should pray against strong typhoons and other natural calamities, moral decay and wickedness. Well, let's put it this way. Uh, uh, in the third quarter, uh, our economy actually grew 8% uh, compared to the second quarter. Tonight, all eyes on the Taal volcano spewing ash and lava. Experts warning an explosive eruption could be days, even hours away, and worse than the initial blast over the weekend shooting plumes of ash. Inside that cloud, streaks of volcanic lightning. <coughs> Typhoon Vamco is the 21st cyclone to hit the Philippines this year and the most deadly. It made landfall on Wednesday, but we're only beginning to see the full extent of its devastation. It comes two weeks after Typhoon Goni hit the Philippines, hitting the Bicol region. Let us pray against deadly wildfires in Australia, USA, Canada, and in the Amazon region. May God also shield these nations from destructive storms and other calamities. A mass evacuation this morning along Australia's southeastern coast, with bushfires looming and extreme danger ahead. A heat wave expected to push temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit by the weekend. The death toll increasing as about 100 major wildfires burn in the West. At least 19 people have died in California, Washington, and Oregon. Dozens are feared missing in fire ravaged Oregon, where two large fires are threatening to merge, and nearly half a million residents have been forced to evacuate. The governor describes the air quality as the worst in the world and warns of what she calls a mass fatality incident with more than a million acres burned so far. 
The Amazon rainforest is on fire again. Whole mountains, hills and valleys engulfed in smoke. Some of these fires are absolutely huge, stretching as far as the eye can see in every direction. Let us pray for God's mercy and deliverance for people and nations from air, sea and land disasters and from terrible plagues and diseases. Kobe Bryant, the legendary NBA star, is dead tonight. His adorable 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, known as GJ, also dead tonight. Seven other people, a, a baseball coach, a pilot, all dead. The helicopter they were traveling in crashed outside of Los Angeles. No word yet on why it crashed but it went down and it caught fire on a hillside in Calabasas, California, about 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. Desperate rescue efforts took place on Saturday in Turkey's Izmir province, a day after a deadly earthquake struck off the coast in the Aegean Sea. Turkish officials announced they pulled over 100 people to safety. Now to another grim milestone, the world surpassing one million deaths from the coronavirus. Richard Engel now on the scars the pandemic has left across the globe and a warning, some of the images are upsetting. This is what COVID has done to us. Pocketing our lands and fields with mass graves. From San Paulo, Brazil, to deep in the Amazon, to even just a few months ago, the Empire City, New York. Let us pray for political stability in Israel in 2020. May the Lord shield this nation from internal and external attacks from enemies. Palestinian Islamists in the Gaza Strip unleashed several clusters of balloons attached to both incendiary and explosive devices over the course of the day yesterday, which consequently sparked several blazes in dry thorn fields within Israel's southern Eshkol Regional Council. Turning now to Jerusalem, where a political crisis over the state budget is seemingly threatening the Israeli government's stability. With just two and a half weeks ahead of a legally binding deadline for approving the state budget, Prime Minister B. Minatonyahu is demanding a one-year budget, which he claims is vital to deal with the economic ramifications of the corona pandemic. Economies of Australia, China, Russia, Canada, UK, Germany, France, Japan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia and UAE, Oman, India, and others will grow significantly in 2020, despite many challenges. China has recorded growth of 4.9% in its third quarter. That's compared to the same period last year. And that's a long way from the lows it reached at the beginning of the year, in the first few months of the pandemic, when the country's economy shrank by 6.8%. Australia's recession may be technically over, but a long and bumpy economic recovery is only just beginning. The economy grew 3.3% in the September quarter, the biggest jump in more than four decades. It follows a run of two consecutive negative quarters as the COVID-19 pandemic ended 29 years of uninterrupted growth. Well, plenty of people are still out of work, but the Canadian economy is beginning to heal from the damage caused by the pandemic. Stats Canada says the gross domestic product grew by more than 4% in May as businesses began to reopen. The Bank of Korea said on Tuesday that the country's GDP in the third quarter grew by 1.9% compared to the previous quarter. But the central bank says the country's exports played a big part in the improved GDP figures. Japan recorded the biggest GDP growth since data is available from 1980. Consumption, which makes up about 60% of Japan's GDP, grew 4.7%. It's at the back of cash handout to all residents, or 100,000 yen, about 960 US dollars. Let us pray against the rise of hate speeches, racism, religious violence, and terrorist attacks in different parts of the world in 2020, especially in Europe. USA, the Middle East, certain parts of Africa, India, and Pakistan. Well, gunshots were heard in the city centre in what the interior minister referred to as a terror attack. That's how it's been categorised. Students rush to get out of Kabul University. Gunshots could be heard close by. Witnesses say attackers entered the campus through its north gate. A gun battle at the entrance of Pakistan's stock exchange in Karachi. Security forces fire back at attackers who detonate a grenade as they try to storm in. This is what Operation Lafia Doll looks like from the air. Dozens were killed and hundreds injured, with hospitals overwhelmed. 
Fighters are reported to have opened fire after arriving on motorbikes and in cars. Soldiers in a United Nations humanitarian center targeted. There will be technological breakthroughs by various group in 2020. This COVID-19 test kit will allow people to take their own swabs and receive a result via an app on their mobile phone. The advantage that we bring is uh, a 96% accurate result uh, within 20 minutes. Called the Extreme Disinfection Robot, it is able to disinfect large surfaces and various shapes in seconds. Need spot the robot dog. Instead, he's out and about in parks in Singapore to remind people to maintain physical distancing. It's part of a two-week experiment to see how artificial intelligence can help reduce human contact in public places as many governments are easing quarantines and lockdowns. Britain's Oxford University and its pharmaceutical partners AstraZeneca have published the preliminary results from large-scale trials, and they show their vaccine is 70% effective at protecting people from the disease. But in a subgroup of volunteers who received a half dose followed by a full dose, the effectiveness rose to 90%. The world is hurting and desperately in need of a savior. Let's take the word of faith and hope to every nation and transform the world. This is the vision and mission of Team International. For more information, contact us at www.teamministriesinternational.com. Who is happy to be in God's presence? How many of you are expectant? Amen. Today's um, prophetic service. We're going to do three things all at the same time. One is our crossover service. Then two is our anniversary. Then three is our Thanksgiving service. But we can do all at the same time. Um, you know, last year, while I stood here, I told you that many terrible things are going to happen in 2020. Um, I didn't say many of them um, because I, I didn't want to give substance. You know, there's something about prophetic words. Once you say it, autom automatically you give it life. Um, a prophetic word is not a death sentence. So some of the things that you have seen here, you have the power to change them. You can pray. I don't think that it's God's will that all these calamities will befall humanity. So he's just telling us these are the things that are likely to happen. And so we shouldn't be prophets of doom. You don't look for bad things to happen and say, this, is, this one's going to die. You say, amen, let him die. That's the wrong attitude. We are intercessors. We stand in the gap. It's our duty to stand in the gap to make sure that bad things don't take place. These are just some of the prophecies God showed me. I'm not saying I'm the number one prophetic authority in the world. I'm just saying like Paul, that we know in parts. And no one can play God and say, I know all. This is how the prophetic words work. God gives you an image. And sometimes if you don't write it down quickly, because of your memory problem, you may forget certain details. Um, that's why sometimes some prophecies don't come to pass. And when you're waiting for God to give you a prophetic word, Sometimes it tells you things, sometimes it doesn't tell you. And so if it doesn't tell you, uh, it's okay. Because if you manufacture things, you're going to struggle to keep those things you've manufactured, to make them come to pass. I remember last year when I stood on this place, 
and I gave the prophetic word for 2020, out of curiosity, I had to check the different churches in the world, prominent men of God. I respect them. I love them, the ministers of the gospel. And I saw the prophecies they gave. And the prophecies they gave were very opposite to what God gave to me. They talked about a lot of good things, which we all like. They talked about they even planned programs. Last year, I wanted to plan my diary. And God showed me blank, blank, blank. And I was concerned. I told myself, when a man of God sees blank, 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 that means it's either his ministry is over or it's done. There was no plan I could make because all I saw was blank, blank, blank. That means there was nothing. I was a bit worried. But I saw that men of God, they said God told them, plan this program in the U.S., plan this program here. So they came out with all the flyers. So I was asking myself, how come, <laughs> how come I have no assignment? Maybe I should start preparing myself for departure. And that was very strange. That was the first time in my life that I couldn't see anything ahead of me. But my spirit picked it up and I came to the church and I was telling team members, you can't travel this year. And it all looked crazy, right? But now we know. And some people were calling some of our members. How come everyone is prophesying this way? And Bishop Tony is prophesying this way. From U.S. to Africa to Asia. All the prophecies were going this way. And Bishop Tony was going this way. And so some people didn't want to ask my prophetic opinion. Someone called. They said, Bishop... Do you know the outcome of the U.S. election? I said, I do, but I'm not going to say it. I told some of my sons and daughters in the faith privately. Uh, a few days before the election, I called Pastor Moses. I said, you know, God told me the outcome. But a lot of Christians are not going to like it. Because in a vision, God showed me millions of believers saying, God, we want this candidate to win. We want this candidate to win. And God told me, he said, son, sadly, that candidate is not going to win. Then I called Pastor Moses, and I told Moses, I said, it's so funny. How can God, <laughs> he shows me millions of believers praying, and he tells me, no, it's not going to come to pass. This one is going to win. Then in my mind, why is he telling me? Then I realize that millions of Christians are not submitted to God. Because if your will is submitted to God's will, whatever he tells you, you take it. There are times that God has told me things that I didn't like. Imagine someone wrongs you. And God tells you, God tells you to go apologize. But submission simply means even when God, what God tells you looks foolish. The foolishness of divinity is higher than the wisdom. When I say foolishness, divinity can never be foolish. But if the skeptics say what he's telling us looks foolish, it's higher than the wisdom of the greatest mortal that's ever lived. Um, now concerning those churches who have prophesied a Trump victory, 
lecture and polls. It was all spoken. I don't want you to look down on them. And I don't want you to call anyone a false prophet. Um, but what it has simply told the church is this. You see, when, this is what happens when a church becomes a sensational church. Uh, don't look for men of God who want to be political. Look for men of God who are not afraid to tell you the truth. But the truth must be told in love. Uh, when God called me into ministry, I told myself something. No matter what, I'll always tell the truth. Even if it means being killed. This is the path I followed. And for believers worldwide watching me, you can't continue to seek the lie again. When something is too pleasant, sometimes without sacrifice, you had better watch it. I've seen too many lives destroyed because of the itchiness to hear what you want to hear. I wish it was that simple. Come out with this prophecy. Someone tells you, I just met someone, and God said, He's my wife or my husband. Are you sure? Yeah, God said it. Three months after the wedding, they divorced. And you're wondering what just happened. If we continue on this path, it's going to be difficult to bring unbelievers to the fold. Believers, we have to be disciplined. Sometimes when you eat too much, you can have all manner of dreams. That's not a vision. Sometimes when you watch some funny movies, it replays in your mind. That's not a vision. So we have to be very careful so that we don't keep making the same mistakes. A man of God called me in the Philippines. He was lamenting. Bishop, I'm so sorry. All the bishops here and the, the pastors, they told me a certain candidate was going to win in the U.S. election. We all believed and we prayed. And it didn't come to pass. You were right. I don't want to be right. I want the church of God to be right. Because someday I'm going to leave this planet. And I'm very worried about the church we want to leave behind. I don't understand when you say God speaks to you and what God is telling you is upside down. And you have to explain it. I don't understand that. God cannot lie. If God speaks, whatever he tells you will come to pass. We must strategically position ourselves at the center of God's will. Where we can hear his voice. And every prophetic utterance must be backed by the spirit of love. Amen. Amen. While I was praying, God gave me some of these prophetic words for 2021. The ones we don't like, we can stand in the gap and change them. It's not a death sentence. One. The spirit of deception, heresy, and idolatry we manifest greatly worldwide in 2021 with a satanic agenda to derail the church of God. The philosophy and doctrines of men will be promoted to the detriment of the doctrine of Christ. The philosophical beliefs of far-right and far-left groups will confuse and entice many believers 
from the truth and change the testimonies. If they don't pray fervently and walk in love. The spirit of Jezebel is at work together with the spirit of the Antichrist. Two conspiracy theories will thrive worldwide in 2021, especially in Western nations. Many of the conspiracy networks will expand mostly on social media to promote division, strive, and hate. A lot of believers will fall into this satanic snare by lying opinions of influential people to replace the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the sacred truth of the Bible. Despite the anti-COVID-19 vaccine, the virus will continue to spread in the early months of 2021 and kill many people worldwide, but nations will begin to see healing, deliverance, restoration, and victory over the deadly pandemic towards the middle of the year. China, Taiwan, and some Asian countries will do well economically in 2021, while the U.S. economy will improve remarkably. Australia and New Zealand will record economic gains, while European nations will, sh will show economic resilience despite the odds. African nations will face some economic hurdles, but also experience growth in some sectors of the economy. Import and export will thrive in the continent, Nigeria and South Africa will improve their economic status. The division between liberals and conservatives will widen in 2021, making it difficult for the divided nation to heal fully. The president will face a lot of challenges with significant victories and some setbacks. A large number of Americans will not embrace his message of unity the administration will introduce new bold policies that will make some people happy and upset others. Wildfires and storms will continue to ravage nations in, in the Americas, Asia, and Europe, especially U.S. and Australia. Sadly, this will continue beyond 2021 if we do not pray for God's intervention. Joblessness and food insecurity will hit many nations in 2021 if the governments of the world does not come up with innovative economic policies. The Philippines economy will begin to recover in 2021 despite the COVID-19 pandemic resistance and a number of deadly storms and other calamities. We should pray against the tragic death of some known world personalities in 2021. Our prayer of faith can make a positive difference. North Korea and Iran we make headlines in 2021 for the wrong reasons. Likewise, Israel and Russia. UK, we also face a lot of challenges. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the Middle East. The love of many people worldwide will grow cold. Wickedness and lawlessness will increase. Finally, for those who love God, 2021 will be a year of recovery, restoration, and overcoming the works of the enemy to be a year of supernatural increase in every spectrum of life. Hallelujah. How many of you are expectant? Okay, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of Psalm 82, verse 4 to 6. I've titled today's message, Breaking the Chain of Ignorance. If you dare say amen. amen. Psalm 82, verse 4 to 6. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the profound word that you're about to give to your sons and daughters. We pray that the word of faith 
will take them to new dimensions of faith and glory. Let God's people say, Amen. Ignorance is lack of knowledge and the biggest security threat to the stability of nations and the welfare of billions of people around the world. It has the tenacity to impoverish, enslave, and destroy nations. Many of the problems that humanity faces today is tied to ignorance. People are godless because they don't understand the mercies and grace of God. People are living in poverty because they don't understand the dynamics of wealth creation. Marriages are suffering because they don't understand the principles that can guide and direct the marriages. You go to some nations, these nations ain't doing well because of ignorance. You want to see changes in your life. You have to stop doing things the way you've always done things. Sadly, those who call themselves believers are very ignorant of the word of God. You can tell me what this pastor said. You can tell me what these politicians told you. What some of the politicians told you. What some of the celebrities told you. But you can't say what Jesus said. That's sad. And that's foolish. You can't be successful without being full of knowledge. In place of truth. Conspiracy theories have alternative facts. You can't even check what is true or what's not true. Ignorance has a price. The Bible tells me in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you've rejected knowledge, I'll also reject you from being priests for me. Because you've forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. You can't be ignorant of the word of God and expect to be a successful minister of the gospel. When you are ignorant of God's word, you stand the risk of being rejected. You stand the risk of not being chosen to do what God has called you to do. The Bible tells me that many are called, few were chosen. Every problem that our society sees today has a solution. And the solution is in your DNA. The solution is in your destiny. But if you don't rise up to the needs of the hour, then nations, your society, and your community is going to be in hell. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Knowledge is a defense. Amen. Knowledge gives you the right to rule over things. Many of the people that are suffering today are suffering because they don't know something. The man who has an advantage, who can manufacture things and come out with creation and make things, is because he knows something that you don't know. The human mind, was designed to do wonders, even do more than the computer. The human mind, scientists can say that we use less than 90% of our brain. The average man uses less than 90% of his brain capacity. And the brain cells can become so weak when you don't store memories in them. Every one of us has the capacity to store memories. 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 You can do things. Someone was asking me. I said, if I see a hundred writers and they sit me down, I can write a hundred books in one day because I have stored it in my head. You need to learn how to update yourself so that when you speak, you speak life. When you speak, you speak wisdom. When you speak, you speak knowledge. Don't be mentally bankrupt because that's not our destiny.
You spend all your time watching junk things. Update yourself. And for some of you who have libraries, don't make it a decorative item. Read every one of those books. Study to show yourself approved. In the early church, we are the Berean Christians. And when Paul went there to preach, the Berean Christians were checking whether what Paul preached was in the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The honorable men are famished and the multitude dried up with thirst. This is the reason why believers are, are in economic captivity. This is why they are in captivity in sickness. Captive. Led captive by sickness. Led captive by poverty. Led captive by sexual immorality. Led captive by wrong character flaws. Led captive. You were made in God's image. God can't be held a prisoner. God can be restricted. God is God over everything. God is an overcomer. That means if you are in Christ, you should be an overcomer. You should possess the capacity to overcome sickness, to overcome sexual immorality, to overcome all, the, all your character flaws. Because the reason why many people are in captivity is because they do not know. You can't know and be enslaved. Do you know that by the stripes of Jesus you've been made whole? Do you know that by the stripes of Jesus you've been set free from all disease? The disease are not going to stop. They'll keep trying. But when they come, you speak the word of God. You can't say because I'm getting old. I have a mother. My mother is about 82 years old. She does not read with reading glasses. She has no maintenance tablet. Her eyes are sharp. Her memories are sharp. There are no wrinkles on her face. She's a pastor. She's a minister of the gospel. She's a tongue speaking believer. She's a demon caster. She's a woman who sees visions. She can. She has the capacity to move in and out of the natural and the supernatural. She told us she told us she said you know what jesus took me to heaven and jesus said this is a song i'm gonna sing they're gonna sing for you when you come home what is wrong with a modern day christian covid knocks the first house it goes to is the home of a christian what happened to when I see the blood, I shall pass over? If the word of God is not real to you, the miracles of God can never be real to you. What happened to the Christian character? That by their fruit you shall know them. What happened to the Christian character? They talk to you. You are easily provoked. You, you are angry. You are all like this. You say, it's my hormones. Shut up for God's sake. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, through you, for you, his character is going to be your character. The, works, the world works for those who work the word. You can't say, I believe. And your belief system is selective. If you believe, you must believe all things that comes from God. Every disease that threatens you. Some of you, throughout this year, maybe once or twice you came to church. Oh, I don't want to be sick. Protection comes from God. The hearse is prepared for battle. But ultimate victory comes from God. Yes, we should do common sense things. Wash our hands, put on our face mask, put on our, 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 our face shield, 
and do the social distancing, but ultimate protection comes from God. You can't, you can't be consistently conscious of sickness and live a healthy life. You can't be consistently conscious of defeat and live a victorious life. Know the right things. Know what God says concerning you. Let every situation be a liar and let God be true. I stand here manifesting the faith of God. Not as someone who works from an, a, a position of advantage. I have seen things that threaten my life. But I stand on the word of God. There was a day in my home. I bought this oxygen, oxygen thing that shows you the this gadget that shows you the level of your oxygen, blood oxygen. And doctors normally say if it's below 90 you need oxygen. That means you're dying. And there was this night I was finding it so difficult to breathe. Then out of caution, put my finger in that thing. Then there was this beep, 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 19, 19, 80, 80, 70 something just going down. My mind tells me you're dying. But my faith told my mind, stop this nonsense. So I put my hands there. I said, this is spirit now ruling over body. Go back. I want you to end at 98. Right on, I, I don't know why I didn't put it on video. Right under my very nose. That thing Tick, 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 tick. It stopped at 98. I said, don't you ever misbehave again. This body, I know you are in a hurry to go to heaven because Bishop Tony doesn't like eating. Bishop Tony doesn't like doing. I said, but I need you to stay alive. You're going nowhere. Speak to your body. Don't allow fear. There's a power that walks in you, walks through you, walks for you. No. Have peace in that knowledge. Have peace in the knowledge that your Redeemer leaves. Not that anything that comes, every challenge becomes, I quit. Who told you that the race is going to be easy? Who told you that the adversary won't come? Who told you that challenges won't come? But thank God, in all these, we're more than conquerors. The Bible tells me in the book of Joshua 1.8, This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Ephesians 4, 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. When your understanding is darkened, you get alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Ignorance takes you from the life of God. Ignorance takes you from the financial life of God. The Bible tells me in him we live, in him we dwell, in him we have the fullness of our being. The price of ignorance is deadly and can frustrate a person's gifts and potentials. Knowledge can protect, promote, and preserve your destiny. 
for what you do not know can cost you untold hardship or outright destruction. Proverbs 22, verse 3. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Knowledge of the future protects you. A prophetic knowledge of what is, what, what is and is to come will protect you. Why do we have the Holy Spirit? We have the Holy Spirit because the Bible tells me that how be it when the Holy Spirit comes. It's going to teach you all things, not some things. And it's going to tell you about things to come. When you have knowledge of the Holy Spirit, and when you have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it's going to tell you when to buy that stock and when not to buy that stock. It's going to tell you the type of investment you should invest in. It's going to tell you don't buy this property. It's going to give you hell. It's going to tell you what to do, why you have to do it, when you have to do it. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of Wisdom. If you lack wisdom, fellowship with the Holy Spirit is going to tell you all things. Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked. I may have to emphasize that again. Truly. These times of ignorance God overlooked, but now command all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. God has overlooked your ignorance in the past, but in these times and end times, your ignorance can cost you a lot. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 2. Also, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. And he sins who hastens with his feet. Tell your neighbor, it is not good for you to be without knowledge. It is not good for you to be ignorant. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Do you know that sometimes when people go into arguments and endless strifes, it is linked to ignorance. Never argue about what you do not know. going to spend a, a lifetime arguing and they say, what's your source of news? I saw it in one of the conspiracy theory websites. That's not been prudent. That's not been wise. Is the world perfect? No. But we still have some credible sites that we can use as reference. These are the news media or source of reference that you should Side in your defense. If you say, I'm going to the, I want to stand before the judge. And the judge tells you to produce your evidence. And you say, well, I just know. The judge is going to throw out the case for lack of merit. That's what they call a no case submission. Some of you claim to know. What you know without evidence is nothing. Jesus was able to show evidence that he was the Messiah. What do we say you are? Who do we say you are? He said, go tell them. The blind see. The deaf hear. The cripples walk. And all manner of things take place. The dead 
are brought back to life. That is the evidence of his ministry. You can argue doctrines, but you can't argue results. We should be proof producers. We should produce proof. What is the proof of your faith with God? What is the proof of your new life in Christ? What is the proof of you spending time praying in the Holy Spirit? What is the proof of you being a child of God? You can say I'm a child of God and you are perpetually oppressed by the devil. That's not the proof of Christianity. The proof of Christianity is freedom in every spectrum of life. The proof of my faith is supernatural victory. The proof of my faith is supernatural favor. The proof of my faith is supernatural power. The fruit of my faith is to do all things through the power of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the proof. Ignorance can cause spiritual, mental, financial, and technological bondage and dependency. This is a major reason why some individuals, organizations, and countries are more powerful than others. Sadly, in this materialistic world, the worth of people and nations are measured by their capacity to contribute significantly towards the global economy. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 4 to 5. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. How do you create wealth? By knowledge. Ask some of the richest men in the world. Some of the richest men in the world are those who created essential services. Business is the rendering of goods and services. Whether you like the owner of Facebook or not, that's your problem. You are on Facebook. Because he created a service. That you can't do without. Instagram. Twitter. And all manner of things. What are you going to do for this planet? What are you going to do for this planet? What is your dream? Your dream is just to work in one establishment. They pay you probably 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 pesos. You say you are going home. Your dream is to allow the pandemic to determine your source of economy. They shut my business down. I don't have money again. You are not being wise. If one door shuts, for God's sake, there are many more doors to be opened. The first time I came to this country, I had problems with so many people, pastors, even team members. Bishop Tony, you are a man of faith. Sometimes your faith is pushing us to the limit. My faith is meant to push you to the limit. Lions don't give birth to chickens. They give birth to lions. Take the statistics of your life. Learn how to number your days so that you don't waste your time. When I leave this planet, I want to die with a smile on my face. I don't want to die with regret. Being too afraid to step out of my comfort zone. I stepped out of my comfort zone. I stepped out of my family home. I stepped out of my nation. I stepped out of my continent. I brought the gospel to Asia, to Europe, and other parts of the world. 
I'm a soldier. I'm a fighter. That's what we do. Step out of your comfort zone. You create one business. And the business has been threatened. And you say, I don't know what to do. Look at the businesses. Do you know, while in the U.S., mainstream was having poverty, Wall Street continued to post extreme gains. Amazon, Facebook, all those people doing business online, they recorded extreme profits. Now you're going to blame them and say, no, no, no. Don't blame anyone who has the wisdom to create wealth where you are fooling around and not being able to do anything for yourself. Come out with technological breakthroughs. Do things that's never been done before. I don't want you to leave this place and rely on your business that failed you due to the pandemic. Leave this place and go and create something new. There are many more businesses to do. People feed every day. Did you ask yourself where the food is coming from? A smart person can go buy a farm and begin to produce and supply. Supply is low because people are not going to the farm. Buy farms. Do things. Do things that has never been done before. Let me give you an idea. People are afraid to use transport. You can customize a van or a bus. Make sure every cubicle is different from the rest cubicle. And you can use it to take people to the destinations. And you can be the only bus or van moving from state to province to province. I can give you a thousand and one ideas. Go and create wealth. Don't be stuck. Do something different. If your business is this and this, Elijah was taken to Brook Charit. And when the brook dried, he left that place and went to a different place. The problem with Christians, we are too rigid. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be, and now and forever. Amen. Wake up. I remember the first time I came to the Philippines and we were having crusades. We were using all these lights. All these lights. We were the first church in the Republic of the Philippines to use all these stage lights. What did they call me? They said, this guy is not even a man of God. Disco lights. Because they were ignorant. God is a father of lights. And every light, physical or spiritual, belongs to God. Today, every church in Metro Manila, is doing what they criticized me for. Thank God I'll continue to set the pace. Like me or hate me, as long as what I'm doing is backed by God, the problem. People of destiny are never afraid to proceed to the next level of glory. Proverbs 18, 15. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Acquire knowledge and seek knowledge. Proverbs 2, 10. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. The distrust of other people and cultures caused by ignorance and a growing fear of globalism has pushed some nations to the brink of extremism, which has led to religious intolerance, racism, and anti-Semitism and violence. Ignorance has the power to awaken and promote the worst human instincts, especially when it is dictated by fear. Proverbs 15, 14. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, 
but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Psalm 73 verse 22. I was so foolish and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. You see, ignorance can create monsters out of men. Second Peter 2.12 But these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption. They speak evil of things they do not understand because they are ignorant. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing. Clamorous woman is a loud-mouthed woman, talks all the time. She doesn't think. That's the creation of ignorance. First Timothy 1.13. He was Paul speaking. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. There are many of you out there like Paul. You're probably doing things you ought not to do because you don't understand what you're doing because you're ignorant. Seek knowledge and may the Lord enlighten your heart. Romans 10, 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. When you're ignorant, there is a tendency for you to try to establish your own righteousness. By establishing your own righteousness, it simply means you have not submitted to God's righteousness. You can't say it's my way or hell way. You can't say it's my way or highway. It has to be God's way. Not sometimes... All the time. Second Corinthians 3.16 Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The key to ignorance is you submitting, not partially to God, submitting absolutely to God. And the veil of ignorance in your eyes will be broken. There is no one that turns to God in spirit and in truth. Will we not be set free from the veil and from the chain of ignorance? Some people abuse their bodies because they think someone is denying them. Why are you stopping me from drinking? Why are you stopping me from having immorality? Why are you stopping me from having extramarital or premarital sex? Because you lack knowledge of what that can, that can do to your faith, what it can do to your conscience, what it can do to your body. The man who abstains from all these knows something you ought to know. When you can't be disciplined, know that you are being controlled by the spirit of lawlessness. And the spirit of lawlessness does not proceed from God. If you lack the capacity to be disciplined, they say, sit, you stand. Stand, you sit. Then know that you are under the influence of the spirit of lawlessness. And you can never be used by God for his end time agenda. Your capacity to overcome temptation and adversity will be determined by your ability to apply the principles of the scriptures consistently in every facet of life through intimacy with God. Psalm 125 verse 1 to 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. 
Daniel eleven thirty two. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. When you know God, you become strong. When you know God, you carry out exploits. When you know God, you invent things. When you know God, you walk in miracles. When you know God, you become spiritually, mentally, and physically strong. Do you know him? You can't say, I know God, and you're timid and passive. You can't say, I know God, and you're still stuck in that small space. You can't say, I know God, and you've been running that business for 255 years, and all you have is a square meter space of 255. That's not knowing God. Knowing God makes you want to take over nations. Knowing God makes you want to conquer territories. Knowing God makes you want to expand your coast. Knowing God makes you want to experience supernatural breakthroughs. That is what the knowledge of God causes. The knowledge of God causes restlessness in your spirit. The knowledge of God causes growth in your spirit. The knowledge of God causes you want, makes you to want to do things. If you are not adventurous in your spirit, if you're stuck in one spirit, Space, that is not the knowledge of God. I am restless. I want to see righteousness flow like an ever flowing stream. I am restless. I want to see Mindanao, Luzon, and, and Visayas come to Christ. I am restless. I want to see the ri righteousness flow like an ever flowing stream. I am restless. I want to see poverty and sickness dethroned in the Republic of the Philippines. I am restless. Can't wait to take the gospel to all nations of the world, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Australia. I am restless. I want to stand before world leaders and telling them that Jesus is the answer to all your problems. I am restless. I want to see institutions established by team. I want to see team having a university that can take the Filipinos out of poverty and ignorance. I am restless. I want to see team university raising world-class doctors and scientists, men and women who can manufacture their own aircrafts. I have a dream. I have a dream that someday we will step into glory, step into power, step into wealth, do supernatural things. I am restless that someday team is going to have a cooperative bank where the poor can take loans and establish businesses. I am restless that someday we are going to have a team city in the Republic of of the Philippines. I am restless. If there's someone in this place who shares that crazy restlessness, give someone a high five and say, this is my time. We are stepping out. Stepping out from obscurity to greatness. We know something others don't know. This is not a boast. We know that our God is good. We know that our God is mighty. We know that our God can do all things. Through him we can conquer every limitation. Through him we can and conquer the plans of the devil through him the red seas can part through him the sun can stand still I am restless the bible tells me in the book of Psalm 50 verse 15 call upon me in the day of trouble I will deliver you and you shall glorify me when you call upon him in the day of trouble, he delivers. My God delivers. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out. There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around 
Elisha. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of team members. That you open the eyes that 2021 is full of hope. It's full of great things. It's full of mercy. It's full of grace. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of my viewers worldwide. That in the place of darkness, they'll see light. That in the place of hopelessness, they'll see hope. In the place of faithlessness, they'll see faith. In the place of not enough, they'll see more than enough. May your eyes of understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll show you four ways to break the bondage of ignorance. One, seek God. God has the blueprint and master plan of your destiny. If you submit to his guidance, it will help you to fulfill your purpose triumphantly. Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 24, 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, there is a prospect and your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 1, 29. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. When you hate knowledge, you separate yourself from God. Two, acquire knowledge. The first one is seek God. The second one is acquire knowledge. Knowledge is power. It makes you strong and guarantees success in every spectrum of life. It is the key to unlimited greatness. 2 Peter 1.5 But also for this very reason, giving all diligence adds to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. Some people say, I'm a believer. I have faith. But there's always something you need to add to your faith. Add knowledge to your faith. Add virtue to your faith. Add wisdom to your faith. First Kings 3.9 Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? Colossians 1.9 For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. May you be filled in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Ecclesiastes 7.12 For wisdom is a defense, as money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. James 1.5 if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Proverbs 12.1 Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Do you love instructions? They give you the instruction, you frown. That's not a sign that you love knowledge. They give you instruction. You say, why is he telling me this? I know what I'm doing. If you knew what you were doing, you would have been promoted many years ago. If you knew what you were doing, you wouldn't spend your lifetime being a supervisor when you should be a manager. If you knew what, what you were doing, you wouldn't spend... 38 years of your life being a God. Please, I'm not saying being a God is wrong. I'm just saying life is in progressive stages. For the small things you have today, thank God. But don't let your small beginnings be your all beginning. Get restless with your small beginnings when it turns into a permanent beginning. 
The Bible makes it clear that the steps of the righteous shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter was the end product on to a perfect day. You don't start as a God and end as a God. That's not a perfect day. The stories I started as a God. Look at me today. I am a CEO. That's the story. Joseph started from the pit and he ended up in the palace. That's the progressive story. So don't tell me you started in the pit and you got buried in the pit. Don't allow your pit of adversity to bury your destiny. Love instructions. Instructions sometimes ain't pleasant, but they'll, they'll help you. Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Three, be humble and teachable. Pride limits a person's ability to learn. Some of the most ignorant people are those who think that they know everything when they actually know little or nothing. Proud people are sometimes loud and lousy. On the contrary, wise people desire knowledge. They are teachable. Proactive and productive. The ability to recognize, honor, and submit to great mentors make them potentially greater than the men and women who train them. Numbers 12.3. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. What a testimony. A man who worked so much miracles. He was more humble he was much more humble than those people he led. Psalm 25 verse 9. The humble he guides in justice and the humble he teaches his way. God guides the humble and he teaches the humble his way. He doesn't teach proud people his methods and his ways. Psalm 37 verse 11. But the meek the humble. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Do we have big people in this house? Who inherits the earth? You can't be proud and experience the power of dominion. Only meek people experience the ability to inherit the earth. Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So if you're humble, you are going to experience three things. You're going to have riches, you're going to have honor, and you're going to have life. Say this after me. I am humble. I am rich. I have honor. And I have life. John 9, 41. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remains. Finally, Embrace and fulfill your purpose. You are not a product of accident or chance, but a creation of godly purpose. Therefore, you must strive to achieve it through faith. The grace of God can make this possible. Isaiah 50, verse 5. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. The reason sometimes people are rebellious and ignorant is because their ears are closed. May the Lord open your eyes and may the Lord open your ears and may you overcome the spirit of rebellion 
so that you can fulfill your purpose in Jesus' name. In conclusion, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come. Touch two, three people and say this. Say, Behold, you have come. Why are we here? Why are we on earth? To drink, have 288 children and die, to womanize, to have 16 children for 16 different men, to tell lies, to steal, to go on social media and strip yourself and say, come on, get me, get me. Is that why you're here? To cause people pain? That's not why we're here. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. To do your will, O God. Every one of us. There is a blueprint. Concerning our lives and destinies. And when I checked the blueprint. I didn't see failure. I didn't see sickness. I didn't see death. When I checked the blueprint, on it is written, the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans of good, not of evil, to prosper you and to give you an expected end. Why are we then suffering? Because we have stepped out of the blueprint. Why are we sick? We've stepped out of the blueprint. Why are we having heartache? We've stepped out of the blueprint. Because in that blueprint, God is going to give you godly partners. God is going to give you godly business partners. God is going to give you good business partners. God is going to give you good friends. God is going to give you good friends. God is going to give you good alliance. God is going to give you good opportunities. Why are we out of these because we have been driven by our own passion. The Bible tells me there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The end thereof are the ways of death. Stand to your feet. Today I speak into your destiny that everyone that has wandered out of the master plan, maybe you have stepped into the position of ignorance. You have stepped out of God's will and everything you are doing is beginning to cause you problem. I declare that before this year ends there is going to be a rerouting in the spirit realm where some of you have stepped into territories that are dangerous causing you pain i declare that there is a shift a mega shift in the spirit realm and i declare that relationships are being realigned in the name of jesus i declare that everything that has caused you pain i declare that there is there is a cutting off of links everyone that is tied to wrong people and wrong businesses and wrong alliances today by the sword of the spirit I set that you free in the name of Jesus. Every doctrine that has messed up with your mind, that has caused you pain, today by the mystery of the word, I superimpose the will of God upon your mind. I declare that your mind is being renewed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that every yoke upon your life and destiny has been broken in the name of Jesus. Every conspiracy of wickedness against you, today as speak prophetically and I declare that let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let every conspiracy against your life cease. Let every enchantment against your life cease. Let every death sentence around you cease. Let every pit the enemy dog against you be scattered. Arise Lord and let the enemies be scattered. Today by the mystery of the 
east wind. I release the fire of God against your enemies. I release the fire of God against those who will rise against you. I release the fire of God against conspiracies against you. Every book that was written against you for your own destruction, I set those books on fire in the name of Jesus. I see a shaking in the spirit realm. Every altar of witchcraft and evil against you. These altars have been pulled down in the name of Jesus. Every blood covenant reused against you. Blood covenant and sacrifice. Ah, I see the blood of Jesus overruling those blood covenants in the name of Jesus. Where there has been plans that you will not live but you will die and be buried. I declare that life is coming upon you. Not just life, quality life, productive life, abundant life. You will not die but live to declare the glory of God. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I stand in your word. I have life. I have abundance of it. I'm born of God. I'm born of the spirit. No weapon of the enemy fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. I will arise. I will shine. I will triumph. I will dominate. I overcome sickness. I overcome sin. I overcome death. I overcome poverty. I overcome all. I am washed, redeemed, purchased, purified, perfected by the blood of Jesus. I am born of God, born of the Spirit, born of His power. I am a new creation. My mindset is new. The way I think is new. I am an overcomer. I am a winner. I am productive. I am prosperous. I am gracious. I am full of grace. I am powerful. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak into my 2000 and I speak into my continue. Say I speak into my 2021. 2021, wait for me. I'm coming in style. I'm coming in glory. I'm coming in power. I'm coming in health. I will fulfill every beat of my destiny. From January to December, it shall be good testimonies. I shall possess the gates of my enemies. I shall enlarge my coast. I shall arise. I shall shine in the mighty name of Jesus. All my projects shall be completed. All my expectations shall come to pass. All my dreams shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of you who seek marriage, I command marital doors opened. For those of you who want cars, I command cars coming your way. For those of you who want to build, I command this building to manifest. For those of you who desire to travel, it shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Every sickness that has harassed you in the past, today I declare that every sickness is over. Every pain is over. Every disappointment is over. Every shame is over. I declare blessings upon you. You shall be blessed in the province. You shall be blessed in the city. You shall be blessed everywhere. The spirit of favor is upon you. Now if you have the o olive oil. I took time and I prayed over this olive oil. And I told God that this olive oil will cause fire at the camp of the enemy. Wherever you go, if your faith is not strong enough, put it in your pocket. By the time 2021 is over, you'll be giving testimony. The olive oil is not a charm. It's a connection of faith to the faith of our God. Because the world has been so sick throughout 2020, what does the Bible say? If anyone be sick, let him call the elders of the church, let them anoint. And when they talk about anointing, it's not only humans, you anoint your properties. 
So because of the sickness that has taken over the world, take it everywhere you go. You, everywhere you go, you say, I am a carrier of life. I'm a carrier of life. I'm a carrier of the fire of God. Everywhere you go, as you anoint, every, the, 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 the manifest wisdom of God will be made manifest. You will see miracles. If you see those who are sick, anoint them. Those with cancer, anoint them. Enough is enough. It is time now to go on the offensive. We are, going to, we are going to invade the kingdom of darkness. We are going to get those with COVID set free. If you know those who have COVID, we are going to have Zoom meetings. Bring them. We are going to cast out those demons from them. Let my people go. Christianity is all about telling the blind that it is your time now to see. Christianity is all about saying, I can't walk, but now I can walk. Christianity simply means, I was blind, but now I see. Christianity simply means, we are taking it, taking it by force. Everything that God has given to us, you want to buy a land, you don't have enough money, go anoint it and claim it. We seize by faith. We seize things. Because if you are passive, the demons of death and destruction will come to you. If you are passive, your life will become a source of stress instead of a source of wonder. If you are passive, the enemy is going to harass you and turn you upside down. We are going to turn this nation upside down for the glory of God. We are going to turn this nation upside down for the glory of God. In a world as aflame with fire, God has raised firemen to fight fire with fire. And we are going to fight fire with fire. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Now open the olive oil. Anoint your forehead. Say this after me. I seal my destiny with the blood of Jesus. I seal my victory with the blood of Jesus. I will not be a victim. I will not be a victor. I will be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Now let's do something briefly. We are going to represent every continent of the world. Let someone represent Asia. Come forward. Come and stand here. Just at the front. Or you just lift your hands. Someone represent, so let someone represent Asia. Let someone represent Europe. Let someone represent Australia. Let someone represent Africa, lift up those hands. Let someone represent India. Anybody of Indian descent. Let someone represent India. Come, come over. Someone represent Europe. Someone represent Africa. Someone represent India. Just come over. Let someone represent the Americas. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift all the continents of the world before you. We declare healing for Africa. We declare healing for Asia. We declare healing for Europe, for South America, and for North America. We declare healing. We declare healing for Australia. And we declare healing for Antarctica. And we declare that COVID, your COVID-19 and poverty and shame and destruction, your, your days are over. And we declare victory for all team members in the mighty name of jesus if you're watching me online you want to plug in into this life force of god say this after me say lord jesus i know you're the son of god you died to set me free today i ask that you come into my life forgive me for all my trespasses and become my lord and savior if you just pray that prayer welcome to god's kingdom the greatest kingdom on earth may that protection be upon you in the mighty name of jesus 
It's our annual crossover service and I hope you guys were blessed with that wonderful message from Bishop. There is one character in the Bible who also had a sort of crossover experience in his life. His name is Jacob and in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob finds himself alone in the desert, far from home. He, ha he had to leave home for his brother Esau wanted to kill him for what he had just done. So his mom and dad told Jacob to leave town, to go to his uncle's place in Padan Aram. He has never been there before and this would be the first time that he ventured out on his own, leaving his family behind and, and living a comfortable and peaceful life. He was on his own. And after walking for a very long time, he finds himself in a desert plain. He was exhausted and, and thirsty and, and tired and hungry and, and most likely even scared. He was alone and completely uncertain about his future. And so he lies down on the ground and even uses a rock as his pillow. That's how terrible and depressing and distressing his situation was. He was at the lowest point in his life, don't you think? And at that point, our gracious God meets Jacob in a dream and tells him this in verse 13 to 15. I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Amazing, isn't it? Now, oftentimes, God meets us when we need Him most, in times of uncertainty and in times of doubt or despair. How many times have you encountered God this year? How many times did God remind you of His promises? Now let's see Jacob's response to this. In verse 20 to 22, he makes a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me to this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Jacob made a vow saying he will give his tithes to God. That's 10% of everything. God fulfilled all his promises to Jacob for he is a faithful God. Now how about you? What is your response for everything God has done for you this year? Like Jacob, are you also prepared to give a tenth to the one who gives it all? As Jacob crossed over to a new season in his life, he made a vow to God. As we all cross over to a new season in our lives, are we ready to do the same? Now there are several ways to offer your tithes to God and in our team church, you can give through credit card via PayPal or through Gcash or Instapay by following the instructions found on your screen. Now, if you aren't prepared to give this morning, but, but there's a prompting by the Holy Spirit for you to do so, reach out to us via Viber or Messenger so we can pray with you as you make this vow of tithing to God. We look forward to see you again next Sunday. Don't forget to register online for a seat should you want to come over to attend service physically. Have a blessed crossover service and an amazing Christmas. Let us never forget that Jesus Christ is the reason we are all here together as one Christian family.